Hello and welcome back to the channel. This time we are doing our highly anticipated review on Route 66 with the long-awaited extension west to Lougheed Station. Originally intended for January, driver shortages delayed the start for around 3 months. If you want more bus trip reviews on this channel in the future, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Fraser Valley Express was approved by the Fraser Valley Regional District in October 2013. Later that year, the city of Abbotsford rejected the proposal, likely due to cost reasons and disputed responsibilities with the neighboring regional districts. Approval was granted again in January 2014, and consultations took place later in fall of that year. The route connecting Carvalth Exchange in Langley and downtown Chilliwack finally started on April 6, 2015, with Chilliwack Transit System in charge of operations. The opening day was on Easter Monday and was celebrated with free rides, giveaways, and brand new buses for the Chilliwack Yard. Initially, buses ran every 30 minutes to every 75 to 90 minutes off-peak, with Saturdays running four round trips. Sunday holiday service was introduced in fall 2017, and that brings us where we are today for the most part. The 2019 ridership was over 250,000, keeping in mind A, its 2015 ridership of just shy of 75,000, and B, only 120 to 130 round trips were made per week. The plans for the west extension from Carvalth Exchange in Langley to Lougheed Station in Burnaby were introduced in May 2019, but the situation in March 2020 came with significant delays to implementation. The extension was eventually opened on March 27, 2022 in time for the route's 7th year of operations. The trip begins at Lougheed Station. The extension between Lougheed and Carvalth began less than a week before the time of filming. Lougheed, in my opinion, is an ideal centralized location for a public transportation hub. Metrotown, Brentwood, and Coquitlam are 15 minutes away on SkyTrain, Vancouver is 40 minutes away, and service to the airport or Horseshoe Bay are an additional 30 to 40 minutes respectively. The nearby mall makes this a great pit stop in the middle of the journey before paying the fare to use the TransLink services. Our bus today is 9482, one of 24 Novabus LFS units based out of Chilliwack. Originally allocated to Victoria, it was transferred to Chilliwack in 2016 after a fire at the neighboring plant damaged a few buses. The bus is part of the batch which included the original buses set aside for the 66. At the time of filming, a few more Novas have been transferred in from Abbotsford to help with the extension. While not your typical highway bus for reasons we'll discuss later, the bus does have 33 cloth American seating inside seats for the 90 minute ride into Chilliwack. Also included are air conditioning, low for accessibility, and a bike rack which can store two bikes. The buses are, at the time of filming, also being equipped with BC Transit's Next Ride real-time tracking technology. This will be extremely useful, especially for a highway route like the 66, which is susceptible to delays on the freeway. We leave Lougheed Station at Bay 1. On this departure to Chilliwack, we have 15 passengers on board. The route follows the 555 route until Carville Exchange minus the stop on 156th Street. The intent is to keep the 66 opened up for people headed for the valley, as allowing people to use this bus between Lougheed and Carvalth only would cause overcrowding and valley-bound people to miss their bus. This is why the fare is $5 per direction with no transfers provided. While it may look steep, $5 is a really good price to pay to go 84 kilometers to Chilliwack or even the 30 kilometer hop between Carvalth and Abbotsford. More on this later. After crossing the Portman Bridge, we cross into Surrey and eventually Langley at Carvalth Exchange. This portion of the route 
takes around 20 minutes to complete. At Carvolth, I expected a few more passengers to get on the bus. That wasn't the case here, implying that A, riders in the south of Fraser area mostly come during peak hours, B, there is a strong ridership base in Translink Zones 1 and 2, or C, riders in Surrey may rather catch the bus at Lohi than Carvolth. Probably that last one was the least likely. Now a few comments were made in a previous video about lacking connections to Surrey Central, which I do agree with to an extent. The thing with regional buses is that connections to local routes can seem suboptimal. This is especially the case here during the off-peak hours with most connections to other routes taking a half hour to complete. Wi-Fi was installed at Carvolth Exchange which could be beneficial for people with mobile devices. But still, I would have liked to see some effort made on the 501 to match the timing of the 66 despite delays happening on the freeway. Sadly, this has been a long time issue for years prior when considering the transfer between the 501 and the 555. A reminder to riders, passengers are not allowed to get off at Carvolth both heading eastbound or else you will have overspent on fares by a buck 95. Alternatively, you cannot use the 66 to go from here to Lougheed Station. After sitting for a minute, we continue east and hit the new HOV ramps opened in 2020. For the first five years of operation, buses had to detour west to use the 200th street exit. These new exit ramps shave off a few minutes from runtime, which adds up in the process. It depends, your mileage may vary. <laughs> On a good day, the time between here and the High Street Mall should be around 20 to 30 minutes. We eventually arrive at our first of two stops in Abbotsford with transfers to the Central Fraser Valley Transit System, High Street Mall. Basically a second retail hub, this stop provides a connection to routes 1 and 2 and the 21 Aldergrove by a walk 100 meters south. A reminder again, transfers are not provided and separate fares are required for each different transit system. A quick 12 minute ride gets us to our next stop at McCallum Park and Ride. I should mention, at both the Abbotsford stops, both westbound and eastbound buses use the same bus stop. So it's important to read the destination sign before boarding. Or if you're not sure, just ask the driver. The only transfer here is to Route 1, which provides service to the University of the Fraser Valley. As a preview to my discussion about the fare system, I will say that there are no benefits for university students. The next stop, Lickman Park and Ride, is another 20 to 30 minutes away. But at this stop here at McCallum, we unload 8 and gain another 10 or 11, along with one bicycle, for a total of about 20 riders. Continuing east, we pass by the site of the infamous atmospheric river events of November 2021. For much of that month, the entirety of Sumas Prairie was flooded as a result of persistent rainfall. This caused the route to be split in two, with one section running between Carvolth and McCallum, and another section running between Lickman and downtown Chilliwack. While devastating in particular for farmers and much of the BC interior, the central Fraser Valley transit system ended up having to run a bit of the western section, which resulted in CNG buses appearing appearing on the route for a couple of days. Service was eventually restored by early December 2021. Now we're just going to get into a couple criticisms I have about the route. Obviously the $5 single ride fare attracts a bit of criticism. Yes, I technically burned $10 to make this video, but as I alluded to earlier, $5 is a good price to pay to travel long distances on a bus. For comparison, a trip on the West Coast Express from Waterfront to Mission costs more than 10 bucks. On an historical note, West Coast Express tickets were valid on BC Transit buses, but this was eliminated in 2016 when the Compass system rolled out. Anyways, making that same trip with the SkyTrain and 701 to Mission will set you back almost $6, assuming you're paying cash and you 
you get the schedule correct in the first place, as there are only four return trips on the 701 mission provided on weekdays. Outside of traveling, there are other private long distance operators, which let's just say you get a better price per kilometer if you're traveling further. Now, there have been calls to increase integration with the local transit systems, UFV, and the upcoming UMO Transit Smart Card. There are a few reasons to why the $5 system is the best option for now. First again, it's as a good price for a distance. As stated earlier, $5 is a ridiculously good price to pay to travel 84 kilometers one way. It's quite literally highway robbery. <laughs> In addition, the two longest sections between Carvalth and High Street and McCallum to Lickman are also the sections with no local alternatives. Second is that it hasn't been increased since the line was announced in 2015. Unlike TransLink, which has increased its fares by small amounts on most years on July the 1st. Had BC Transit increased the fare for the past 7 years, we'd see a fare closer to $5.50 I think. Third, it would really hurt the people going from end to end if a distance based fare was put into place. As mentioned earlier, cheaper alternatives exist for people traveling locally. Number 4 is more relevant for this video. With the opening of the low heat extension, it intends to prioritize the 66 for people heading to and from the Fraser Valley. Allowing people to use the 66 between Carvalth and low heat would A steal revenue from travel. Translink, B cause overcrowding on eastbound trips, and C ignite a review according to the Transit Act, which restricts duplication of Translink services by non-Translink operating companies. This is also the reason the route doubles with the 555, as sending either route to Coquitlam Station would disqualify the compliance with the SCBCTA Act. The 555 has to be run as a separate service between Carvalth and Lougheed Station in conjunction with the Fraser Valley Express. BC Transit does not have the money nor authority to provide additional service for Translink customers between Carvalth and Lougheed. Between these and the reasons I mentioned earlier, it seems like the $5 system is here to stay. Besides, for return customers, there are discounted options for bundles of 10 as well as monthly pass options. Another criticism comes in the ride quality. The buses used on the route are standard 40-foot Transit buses. To some, this might seem uncomfortable for a 90 minute long ride. And to TransLink's credit, there is a proper suburban fleet serving routes such as the 351 White Rock Center and the 555 Portman Express. BC Transit also has single door Nova Suburbans on runs in Victoria and Pemberton. Those buses have 41 seats along with an overhead luggage rack. Now because BC Transit is a crown corporation, buses with niche characteristics are almost unheard of, well, outside of pilot projects and demonstrations. In fact, if you have heard of the economies of scale, it argues that increasing productions results in reduced costs, which is the case here in purchasing large amounts of buses to spread out throughout the province. In addition, the company needs to be able to transfer different buses to different cities when the needs arise. One such example was the garage fire in Chilliwack which damaged the few buses. Replacements were sent in from Whistler, Abbotsford, and with the case of our unit today, Victoria. Because there are not many long distance highway routes with the mid-sized ridership, proper suburban equipment will not be seen for the new future. However, BC Transit has said in a past statement that ridership numbers are being looked at. Perhaps the only way we'll get deckers on the route is if the ridership warrants it. And this all goes back to the ridership versus frequency argument. So for now, a bus is a bus and this will do for now. We exit onto Lickman Road and have completed the freeway portion of the route. Lickman Park and Ride is the first of three stops with transfers to the Chilliwack Transit System. So in total, we serve three park and rides, each funded by the local transit authorities. Carvalth Exchange run by TransLink, McCallum, which is served by Abbotsford, and Lickman Park and Ride, which is under Chilliwack. At Lickman, transfer is available to the weekday limited Route 59 Industrial. The last stop before the terminus serves the retail area around the Cotton One Shopping Center. Nothing special here as the main downtown area is still a few kilometers to the north. Most passengers get off at this stop to transfer to other routes.
as we leave the retail area, let's do one final review of the route. The 66 is the combination of teamwork between the local transit agencies and the regional districts. Extending the bus to low heat establishes the Skytrain station as a centralized hub for regional transportation. While not the most comfortable for some, the bus does provide a decent frequency for the 90 minute ride into Chilliwack Center. The fleet and the $5 system are the most optimal for the current usage situation. I would recommend the 66 to people looking for a cheaper alternative to other long distance buses. Ride quality does suffer a bit, but the cost and frequency outweigh the disadvantage for riders. All in all, the 66 is proof that there is demand for regional transit options south of the Fraser River. With the Skytrain extension out to Langley in the works, a large jump in ridership is very, very likely. Personally, I would like to see later service, especially with service to the Abbotsford Center Arena for events such as the AHL's Abbotsford Canucks and other large concerts. We arrive at Yale and Spadina around 100 minutes after starting our journey at Lougheed Station. Transfer is available to other routes such as the 51 to Vetter for those heading to the UFV Chilliwack campus. Bus service from Chilliwack goes all the way out to Hope, so that makes it possible to go from Hope to Horseshoe Bay and Lions Bay using public transit. As mentioned multiple times already, a separate fare is required when using the local transit system. All trips on Route 66 depart from stop B at the intersection. Other buses can be found on Yale Road. Downtown Chilliwack is pretty much your average medium-sized city with a grocery store, town hall, historic lane, and so forth. At the time of posting, a bunch of route numbers were changed due to the rollout of the Nextride real-time tracking system. That'll be it for this video. Please see the description for sources and more information. If you liked this week's video and would like to see more transit-related content, please consider subscribing to the channel. Consider hitting the bell icon for more notifications. Do you think the fair should be restructured? Please leave it in the comments and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.